nine kayak fishing mistakes I made and you should avoid starting now. I've been in the kayak fishing sport for a while now and the reality is I made some dumb mistakes. The good news is you can learn from them and probably save some cash in the process. I'm gonna skip over the begging you for the likes and sub and bell and hop right in and get this party started. Here's the thing, stick around to the end because the last three are specific to fishing out of your kayak. Mistake number nine, here we go. Your skin is not the only thing that could be compromised by the sun. The reality is those UV rays will destroy just about anything over time. You can just ask my hot tub cover. Fortunately, that also means your kayak. You see, kayaks are made, most of them, from polyethylene. Fun fact, polyethylene is the most widely used plastic in the world. And two things happen to polyethylene when exposed to UV rays. One is that the colors fade, big bummer. Two is that the plastic actually becomes brittle. This is kind of a big deal for those who carry a lot of heavy loads on their kayak. I know mine fully loaded is around 100 pounds. And so that crack that you got or maybe you saw on a social media feed with somebody else may have less has to do with the manufacturer and how they built the kayak and more about how it was stored. All right, there's two things you can do here. One is the obvious one, do not store it in the sun. As you can see here, I have mine up on a pulley hoist. If you're interested in how to do that, I made a video about it, I'll throw it up in the cards. Just because it's not outside doesn't mean those rays are not coming through the glass and fading the color of your awesome kayak. As you can see here, I'm still making that mistake because I don't have any cardboard over here. So it wouldn't surprise me that when I take this down, this little section here, here would be faded by the sun. Looks like I need to learn from that mistake. Second thing you could do is actually use a protectant. I highly recommend the Aerospace 303, this stuff right here. The reality is it's kind of expensive, but it's worth it. Some of the best out there on the market. So I'll throw a link in the description below. Moving on, number eight. Whether you purchased a kayak or not, this mistake is probably one you never thought of. The color of your kayak. When you're not looking for a kayak, you're looking at the color and be like, how awesome does it look? The question you're not probably asking yourself, and maybe you should, is how will I be visible in the water to other watercraft? If you're concerned with safety, especially if you fish those heavily trafficked waterways, then this might be something you want to consider. But if you fish places with not a lot of boat traffic, but you're moderately concerned with boat safety, then I have another option for you. So when you're on the water, your best colors to be seen are obviously your high-vis colors, high-vis green, your high-vis yellow, your high-vis orange, like this guy right here kind of difficult not to see him. Your moderate colors are gonna be your reds, your blues, your greens, and some of your worst colors are gonna be your white kayaks. Might not be thinking about this, but on a sunny day out in the water, you're just gonna look like a glare. Also, one of the worst colors is camouflage because you blend in right with the horizon. You have to be a complete idiot if you were to purchase a camouflage kayak. Now keep in mind, when we're out in the water, we assume that boaters see this. But the reality is a lot of times, boaters might only see this profile of your kayak. So it may be a really good idea to pay attention to the color of your kayak. And if you don't have one, if you have a camouflage like this idiot here, well, it might be a good idea to get a flag for your yak. The Yak Attack makes a fantastic kayak flag. You should check it out. And if you fish at night, it lights up. So I'll throw that in the link below. Mistake number seven. All right, this one's gonna be quick. I purchased my native Slayer Propel 10 off Facebook Marketplace, drove two hours to Pittsburgh to pick it up and I didn't have a trailer at the time so I took every single strap I owned threw it to the top of my car and drove home and it was the loudest ride of my life as all of these straps vibrated in the wind well what I didn't realize was happening at the time as I was flying down the road at 70 miles per hour is that strap was vibrating and whenever that strap started touching my kayak that's where it was making a lot of the vibrations and when I came home I found that all that friction actually melted part of my kayak it was a big bummer because I just purchased it so if you're gonna take a long trip make sure you put a piece of cardboard in between the strap and your boat so you don't melt your kayak moving on to mistake number six this is a mistake I made I just purchased my fishing kayak and just hop out in the water and started fishing I had no clue I didn't know my limitations I didn't know my abilities and I definitely didn't know my safety measure I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail here but at a high level you should at least know how to do these things you should know how to do a deep water re-entry in case you fall out of your kayak it's not as simple as you may think you should know how to identify wind speed and know kind of what's your line I just did a video on this on how to identify wind speed by deducing how the wind affects the things around you. I'll throw this up in the car. You should let someone know where you're going to be when you're out kayak fishing. You should be prepared for the weather. Actually, you should be prepared for immersion. You should at least somewhere on your yak have a whistle or some type of small horn. Make sure you have a tow line. I always also keep a knife on my body. You, of course, should have a personal flotation device. Watch your hydration and much more. I share these things because the leading cause of death in kayaking is drowning and drowning a lot 
of times a result of not knowing your abilities, your limitations, and your safety measures. These are actually a bullet point list of a video I'm putting together. So if you're not subbed to this channel, hit that sub and bell and you will be notified when it comes live. Moving on to mistake number five. Fishing kayaks are expensive and since you're dropping a bunch of cash, you should be able to try this thing out before you buy it, just like you would with a car. So here's some things to consider. Some stores won't let you try before you buy, but here's the thing, you don't have to buy for them. You're the one that has the cash, you're the one that has the leverage, go somewhere else. Obviously you could buy used, like I said earlier, I bought mine off of Facebook Marketplace. All you have to do is let the seller know, hey, would you meet me at the local pond so I can test this thing out? Just make sure that you've done your research and you're ready to buy. Some specialty kayak stores actually build ponds on their property so you can try these out. They're not everywhere, but do your research, you might have one near you. Here's another option. If you absolutely have a kayak that you love and it's only sold at this store and you can't find it anywhere else, you might want to dig into the return policy. It might be very generous. Just make sure you dial in whether or not it's an in-store credit or a full refund. And last thing, if you're not in a hurry, uh, a lot of these stores that sell kayaks have demo days a few times a year. So head over to the website and see when those are. All right, if you're still with me, hit that like button. Let me know you're tracking. Moving on to mistake number four. Get a keel guard before it's too late and the damage is already done. Here's the thing. I did that with my native Slayer. I was so excited when I bought it. I just hopped out in the water and I kind of destroyed the front hull of it. Here, here's the Here's a video of it. Um, so I actually did a DIY Kydex keel guard for that. It's working out great. Like most things that you sink a bunch of money into, you want to keep them nice. And I know that my kayak fully loaded, like I said, is 100 pounds. And when you ram that into a rock, it's going to do some damage to that polyethylene hull. And since most kayaks purchased from the store don't come with a keel guard, it might be a good idea for you to get one. Three options for you here. Number one, obviously you can purchase these online. They're kind of expensive though. But if you do a quick Google search, you can find them. Option number two, if you really want to invest into your kayak, I highly recommend doing a DIY keel guard using Kydex. I actually did a video on how to install this and how all the things that you need to purchase it. So I'll throw that up in the cards and you can do it for yourself. I put mine on in the middle last season. It's been holding up ever since. So highly recommend that. And the third option I have is kind of exploratory. I found this kayak, this Aruba 10, in a river about a year and a half ago. And I, I turned it into the police and they said, if no one comes for it, it's yours. Well, that was a year and a half ago. So it's mine. I'm starting to mod it out a bit and I don't want to spend a lot of time putting a DIY Kydex keel to guard into. I'm testing out how this would actually work. It's a Gorilla Tread Tape. I'm going to put a video together here in the future and I'll let you know how this holds up. You can see here it's really rough and since I'm not in that kayak a whole lot, it's more for if someone wants to come fishing with me, I don't want to invest a lot of money and this thing was like 10 bucks. All right, we're down to the last three and like I promised, these have to do with mistakes I made fishing from my kayak. Well, all right, we'll start with number three. All right, this one has to do with keeping a low profile. Before I was a kayak fisherman, I was a bank fisherman, so I didn't worry a whole lot about sound. Well, now that you're in a kayak, there's all kinds of noises coming from your kayak that could spook those bass. So keeping a low profile is key. Also keep in mind where those eyes are on the largemouth bass on the top of their heads. So they're very aware of what's going on on top of the water. I fish here in Northeast Ohio a lot. There's this one lake that I fish and there's a bald eagle nest. And often I see that bald eagle come down, snatch a bass and take off. So it's going to benefit you to keep a low profile. And this is what I mean. If you have an electric motor on your kayak, you might want to turn that off and pedal into your spot so you don't spook the fish. If you have a pedal powered kayak, you're going to slow this down so you're not making a lot of noise as you enter into where you want to fish. And I would imagine most of you paddle your kayak at some point. So keep in mind the splash that you're making with your kayak paddle. And also anytime you bang that against your boat, it's not helping your fishing game any. Mistake number two is keep your distance. And I'm not talking about from other kayak fishermen I'm talking about keep your distance away from those bass. Guys and gals, it's gonna be much easier for you to catch that bass you're tracking if they don't know you're there. There's a tendency to try to get as close as you possibly can to that bass, but actually that works against you. You don't have to shake hands with that thing. You just gotta be able to make out the outline of the fish. And the further away that you are, the higher the chances are you're gonna get a bite. Quality optics will help you here, but also keep in mind how you have your kayak positioned. If possible, do your best to position your kayak and your back to the sun. And mistake number one, I made this mistake 
all the time. Now, a lot of you guys are deadly with where you can put that lure. I mean, you can put it just about anywhere you want. And this comes into play a lot when it comes to bed fishing. You see a fish and you just kind of land that lure right on its head. And what happens actually those fish scatter. I used to make that mistake all the time until I learned to overcast my lure. Instead of landing it and dropping a bomb right in the middle of the bed or right where that fish was, overcast your lure a few feet and then dance that right back through where that fish is sitting to get that reaction bite. If you like these tips, you're gonna love this video, 11 things I wish I knew before I started kayak fishing.